we are exploring Descartes' meditations one. Um, Descartes' overall strategy is skepticism. He's known to be kind of this father of skepticism in modern philosophy where you're using rationality, specifically reason, to kind of understand and navigate what's true, what's not true, what reality is, and how do we know things. And so with this idea of skepticism, in order to understand the truth, we have to kind of tear down the foundations of our knowledge and what we think is fundamentally true in order to realize that we might have been deceived or we could be uh, mistaken by other people. And so this notion of skepticism is to always think about, okay, is this true? Is this real? Am I being deceived right now? Um, so just because someone tells you something is true or an authority figure tells you something is true, right? You need to still question it and still think, okay, this is what they said, but is this really true? Is this my reality? And so he kind of sets the framework for how he's going to question everything, right? He withdraws into solitude and he basically says that, you know what, I need to be free of all distractions. I need to be alone. I need to be completely by myself um, because if I'm with other people, if I have all of these distractions, right, I'm not really going to be able to understand truth and reality and how I know things. And so he's hanging out at home alone, right? He has a candle burning, which is going to be very significant soon um, in meditations two and three, especially. And so in meditations one, he's basically tearing apart the foundations of his knowledge and saying, okay, well, in order for me to understand what's true, I have to start from the bottom. I have to start, if you think about knowledge as a pyramid, right? I have to start from what I think is fundamental because then everything else is built upon that. So I can't just start from up here. I have to start from down here and just dismantle everything, which is scary and intense and overwhelming. But Descartes is ready and excited to do this because he is seeking the truth. And so he talks about how a way for him to be able to question everything is through God being an evil genius. He says, I don't know really what's going on with God, but I'm just going to assume God is an evil genius because that will enable me to truly question everything, to really dismantle my reality. If I think that God is a good God or perfect, then I'm going to be less likely to question everything, right? I'm going to be trusting what I perceive. I'm going to be trusting what I'm seeing and what I'm thinking. But if we think and just strategically assume that God is an evil genius, then we will be more likely to question everything around us and really embody that strategy of skepticism. So this is his assumption that he makes in the first meditation, that God is an evil genius who is deceiving him. And so... What else is deceiving him, right? Because it's not just God, it's also himself. He distinguishes, he establishes this dualism between the mind and the body. And so he basically says that his body, right, which are which is connected to his senses, they're always trying to deceive him. And he can't really trust what his senses are telling him because our senses can change, our senses can fluctuate, Um the way I might feel about it being cold outside, someone else might say it's warm outside. I might think I heard someone say something when in fact they said something else. So what we see and what we hear and what we touch and what we feel, right, and smell, all of those can be mistaken, right? Because our senses fluctuate and they're very subjective, right? They're very individualistic. And so he embodies this deception of the senses by talking about the awake versus dreaming distinction. And he says that he is having a really hard time distinguishing between being awake versus dreaming. And I want you for the next few seconds, right, to think about how you know that you're awake right now and that you're not dreaming. Because a lot of the markers that we use to tell or to distinguish between being awake versus dreaming are actually not as legitimate and trustworthy as we believe, which can be quite disappointing. Um, but Oftentimes people say, well, I don't dream about being in philosophy class, so I obviously know I'm awake. Some people have hyper-realistic dreams, right? I'm one of those people. I have dreams about teaching. I have dreams about being at work. And so um, just saying that dreams tend to be about fantasy does not really constitute this distinction. Other people say that, well, I can't control myself in my dreams, or I feel like there's a lack of understanding what's happening in my reality. 
but someone can actually control what happens in their dreams, right? Some people can actually lucidly dream. And so they do know what's going on. They are somehow aware of what's happening. I'm, one, I'm not one of those people, but um, that distinction also doesn't constitute everyone's experiences. And so Descartes talks about how it's easy for him to think he is awake when he is in fact falling asleep, or it's easy for him to think that he is dreaming when in fact he is awake and he's drowsy, right? And so um, this whole awake versus dreaming distinction will come back in the last meditation. But I want you to think about how, you know, we assume we think we know the distinction, but in fact, if we really deconstruct that, we in fact don't know. So the body, right? It's kind of a mess. We don't really know what's going on with it. And we have to really trust our minds. But what's happening with our minds isn't quite trustworthy either because we are assuming that everything we once knew was false. And so this is basically what Meditations 1 is about, right? He's establishing this method of skepticism and he's basically saying, I'm going to tear apart the foundations of my knowledge until I find and know that something is true right? And I'm going to be kind of careful about my body because my body can be so deceptive, right? I don't really know what's happening here. And I need to make sure that just because I sense something that doesn't necessarily mean it's objectively true, right? And of course, establishing this methodology that God is an evil genius who is deceiving him. So he has to kind of always be conscious and aware of that, right? So that's meditations one in a nutshell.